Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. This is podcast number 49, a talk on plant-based whole food nutrition for humans and raw meat nutrition for cats and dogs. And then improvisational keyboard solo by yours truly. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. And I want to talk about nutrition. One of my passions uh, is nutrition. I mostly am an artist and a model for artists. And that's how I make my living. And my hobby, I would say, because my real passion is, is my artwork and being a model. Those are passions of mine. Uh, but my actual hobby, which is something I do on the side for fun and because I'm just fascinated by it, is nutrition. And I recently switched back to a more uh, vegan, plant, whole foods-based diet with no processed foods, and I feel really good right now. I'm doing it for my mental health as well as my physical health and for the environment and for the welfare of animals or to not want to support the, um, the kind of brutal lives that certain animals have that are raised for meat and for dairy. And my cat is the opposite. He is on a pure meat diet. He's on raw frozen meat that I get him at the health food pet store. Uh, One thing that really concerns me is that even to this day, people, humans that go through medical school to learn how to be doctors are not taught hardly anything about nutrition and particularly about the importance of nutrition in terms of preventative medicine as well as maintaining your health, as well as if you have a disease, you can sometimes reverse the disease or at least strengthen your immune system through healthy eating to the point where your disease can be much better and more manageable and you'll feel a lot better. So again, I'm not a doctor, but I, I'd so got, talk to your doctor about whatever nutritional uh, stuff you want to work on. But I would just say that it is really sad to me that even to, to this day, unless you're majoring in nutrition, I guess, you don't really get taught a lot about the power of nutrition on the body. And that's because our medical system is based on people wanting to do surgery and prescribe medications and drugs. And it's kind of like, You know, those things save a lot of people's lives, especially if you're in a traumatic situation where you have to rush to the hospital because you were in an accident or a fight or you have some sudden emergency and they can save your life. But then after that, you still need to eat healthy and exercise if you actually want to be a healthy person. And so I would just say that one of my passions definitely or my hobby is nutrition, studying what I can do to help my own health improve as well as my cat. My cat is on a raw meat diet. There's a a lady called Dr. Karen Becker and she's a veterinary doctor for animals. And I think she, she has a regular veterinary degree, but she also is an expert, sort of like a naturopathic vet in terms of understanding a lot about nutrition and how it affects dogs and cats and my cat the vet thought might be diabetic and I was worried about his kidneys because he was drinking a lot of water and peeing a whole lot more than normal and to make a long story short I ended up switching his food a hundred percent cold turkey from his commercial pet food, which I was feeding him wet and dry food that was supposedly organic and all natural and wheat free and gluten free and grain free. But then I really carefully read the labels and realized that there's potato starch. Instead of wheat, they put for filler, potato starch, sweet potato, rice flour, etc. So they can call it wheat free and gluten free, but it still has carbs and grains in it which is really not that good for cats and their blood sugar. So basically, I switched him to 100% raw frozen meat that I get at the health food pet store, which is ground up muscle meat with organ meat, which like liver and lung and heart mixed with muscle meat. And I feed him a combination of chicken, turkey, venison, beef, lamb, and rabbit. I think his favorite is rabbit. 
And this is all ground up. And it also has some vitamins and minerals and some, maybe some fish oil in some of the brands. I, I feed them like three different brands. And at first I thought it was a lot more expensive. And then I realized it wasn't. And the reason why is because the food is so dense. When you feed your cat or dog raw meat, it's very dense and very filling. And he eats smaller meals than he used to. And he also doesn't waste any of it. He loves his raw meat diet so much that he licks his bowl clean almost every single time. I rarely find anything left in the bowl after he's done eating. And so he really loves his food. His fur has gotten shinier. His blood sugar is completely normal. He's not diabetic. And my cat plays and runs and he looks happy. His eyes, he has a look in his eye like he's happy and content. And he seems to be digesting. He, he Normally he pees a normal amount now and he rarely even drinks water out of his dish that I have for him. He mostly gets his liquid through his raw frozen meat. And I basically take the, the frozen meat and thaw it out a little bit and then I, I cut it with a knife into little bits for him and I sometimes mush it up with water and a fork so he can sort of drink it. But mostly I just slice it up into little tiny pieces that are frozen and then they start thawing out and he eats it and he loves it. So that's my cat's diet and he's very healthy. That's a species appropriate food for a cat, mostly meat. He's a carnivore. I, on the other hand, am mostly vegetarian at this point. And so I stopped eating eggs and cheese and I haven't really done a lot of milk in like 25 years or so. So I was kind of used to not drinking any cow milk. I also eliminated, uh, I don't eat like fake milk, like coconut milk or soy milk or almond milk because that's kind of processed. And so I mostly just drink water and black coffee and tea as well as kombucha. And I take, uh, the only supplements I take actually are vitamin B12 and spirulina, which is blue green algae, which has lots of, of good stuff in it. And sometimes I take ashwagandha. Right now I'm on Wellbutrin for depression and anxiety and I kind of want to wean myself off of that and try once again to use nutrition as a way of improving my mental health. And that's something that I'm going to work with with my therapist and my doctor and I'm working on that plan with them. But I'm mostly trusting my own intuition on this. And I've been watching a lot of videos and documentaries on health and nutrition and plant whole food based diets and what they can do. There's many, many, many doctors online. If you just Google, you know, plant based whole food eating, you can find many different TED talks and just basic videos of people giving lectures, people with, you know, medical degrees, giving lectures on how their patients have been helped by switching to a plant-based whole food diet in terms of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, you know, many different diseases or just health issues, hypothyroidism, obesity, etc. Just all kinds of like skin rashes and various problems. Usually if you change your diet to the most healthy diet you can possibly eat, usually your health will improve. And sometimes people have gotten rid of their diabetes and had diseases that they were told would never go away have actually gone away or become a lot more mild and the need for medication and surgery goes way down when you do this. So you might still need medication and surgery even if you're eating a really healthy diet and exercising but almost always people seem to improve their health quite a bit when they do this. And so I've been doing this um mostly plant-based diet now for a couple weeks, I think. And for instance, for breakfast, I usually have either a smoothie or steel cut oats. And so those are my two main breakfasts that I rotate back and forth between. And I, let's see, when I have oats, I have steel cut oats and then I sometimes grind up some flax seeds and I do chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed mixed in with the oats. And then I have for sweetener, I have frozen blueberries, organic, and dates that I slice up for, for sweetness. And that's a way to sweeten your cereal without using any sugar. 
I mean, you use just natural sugar basically made by nature. And they say that the vitamins and minerals and sugar that's in whole fruit and whole vegetables is very different than if you were to eat a supplement because it, they separate out the nutrients. Even just sugar, like refined sugar, is a certain kind of molecule, or even honey and maple syrup, etc., is a certain kind of molecule. But if you actually eat dates, whole dates made by nature, and whole blueberries and strawberries made by Mother Nature, and bananas and mangoes, etc., the molecule is very different. It's actually like a whole sugar, it's more complicated and more absorbable by your body and easier to digest. So I find that I like to just not use any sweetener, except I sometimes put raw honey, a little tiny bit in my black coffee, but usually I just drink my coffee plain. And if it's too strong, I just add some water. And then my smoothie breakfast, oh, I also sometimes sprinkle dried fruit and this kind of flaked dried coconut that's unsweetened on top of my cereal. And recently I tried buckwheat groats, which I guess are related to the rhubarb plant, and I guess it has more protein than oats and rice. And buckwheat groats have kind of a really nice flavor, and they're kind of, they remind me of rice, actually. They're kind of big, round little things, and they... I don't know, their texture is more kind of chewy and rubbery, kind of like rice. I don't know how to describe it, but buckwheat groats are actually not wheat at all. They're, they're called buckwheat groats, but they're kind of like not oats. I don't know why they call them groats. And they're not wheat, but they're called buckwheat groats. So try those. It's, it's pretty inexpensive at the health food store, like in the bulk section. And you just kind of cook it like rice or oatmeal. And I have a rice cooker. So I usually cook my buckwheat groats and or my rice in my rice cooker. And I sometimes mix it together with chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed, etc. And let's see, the other breakfast I like to have is a smoothie. And I start with a base of artesian spring water that I get at an artesian well near Seattle. And it's untreated water. It has no, it has natural minerals from the earth and it has no fluoride and no chlorine in it. So I'm really happy that I have access to that kind of natural water. And then I put unsweetened raw hemp protein powder, which is just part of a hemp, hemp plant dried up and ground up. And it has nothing else in it, just hemp protein which apparently has lots of good amino acids. And let's see, then I put greens. I put like mixed greens, sometimes arugula, sometimes the blue-green looking kale, sometimes the, the more yellowish green looking kale. Basically, I just rotate through different kinds of greens and put a little bit of greens in there. So water, hemp protein powder, and some greens. Grind that up. Then I add a frozen banana sliced up. I like mangoes, blueberries, strawberries, acai, which is a cool kind of fruit that's kind of like dark purplish color. So I put just a random mix of fruit, whatever I have on hand, sometimes raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, blueberries, acai, mango. Those are the different kind of fruits. I love guava. I wish I could find guava. I haven't found any in Seattle raw uh, like fresh or frozen guava. Maybe I need to go to an Asian market. I don't know. But I would love to find some guava somewhere in Seattle. Maybe the health food store has some frozen guava. I love that flavor. And then what else do I put in there? I sometimes add chia seed, hemp seed, and flax seed to my smoothie as well. And then I usually have it with a probiotic tablet and or some spirulina capsules or tablets. And that's a smoothie breakfast. Now for lunch, I either like to have a really big salad with just a bunch of mixed greens and pumpkin seeds. Sometimes I slice up peppers and cucumbers and then I put some nutritional yeast on top. And I've been having like oil and vinegar type salad dressing, but now I'm thinking since I found out that vegetable oils really aren't even very good for you, that's just kind of empty calories with no nutrients, 
just a waste of calories basically and not really that great for your body. So I think I'm going to eliminate vegetable oil from my salad dressing and what I'm going to have, unless I can find, let's see, I like to pop popcorn. So I might use oil to pop my popcorn unless I can find an air popper and then I can pop popcorn without any oil at all. But for my salad dressing, I learned that there's some recipes, oil-free dressing, which is you can take raw walnuts and grind that up with with uh, vinegar, apple cider vinegar, which has uh, live um, bacteria in it. If you get the, the good kind of apple cider vinegar at the health food pet store or health food pet store, at the health food human store, <laughs> I get my cat's food at the health food pet store and I get my food at the health food human store. So apple cider vinegar that has, it says with the mother, meaning the good bacteria, you can see it's cloudy at the bottom and you grind that up in a blender with some walnuts, which is a good healthy omega-3 fat. And then I haven't tried this yet, and then I'll add water if it's too thick, but it's probably gonna be fine if it's the right amount of vinegar and walnuts. I can probably experiment. Another way to make oil-free salad dressing is to grind up cilantro and salsa into a blender, and maybe a little lemon juice if you need it. And then let's see, there's another kind of salad dressing that's made with almond butter. You take almond butter and then I forgot what else, like maple syrup, almond butter, and one other thing. And you grind it up in a blender and then you make it to the right thickness, you know, add or subtract water, depending on how thick or thin you want your salad dressing. And that's a way to have oil-free salad dressing and make your, you know, salad taste better with some nutritious ingredients and not worry about empty calories in the form of oil. And they say, some people say olive oil is good for you and some people say olive oil is not good for you and that it clogs your arteries. Who knows? Mostly I agree with the fact that it's probably empty calories. So, you know, if you really want the nutrition of an olive, eat an actual olive and eat the natural oil that's inside the olive as opposed to just grinding up whatever they do to olives to turn them into olive oil, you know, because then it's highly concentrated oil and then you're, it's missing all the nutrients of the olive. You're just getting the oil. There's no fiber, there's no vitamins and minerals, it's just oil. So I'm eliminating the oil from my eating. And what else? And then for dinner, I usually have, or lunch, um, rice and beans in a pot with um, sometimes green chilies, red chilies, mushrooms, garlic, onions. Uh, I kind of make sort of like a rice and bean soup. And you can literally make soup with like tomato, tomato ba- uh, paste base and water and, you know, like vegetable bouillon cube or different like turmeric, different spices. And you can throw in potato and onion and sweet potato and and peppers and mushrooms and just whatever vegetables that you like. I find that uh, I want to eat more zucchini because it's really good fiber, but zucchinis just don't really have much of a flavor and it's kind of boring. So what I do is I just add zucchini to my rice and beans and vegetable mix. And I love to throw red and green chilies in with my mix to make, you know, to give it a nice, I love chilies. So I like the flavor of red and green chilies, not the super hot kind, but the kind that are kind of mellow. I like some jalapeno peppers sometimes, uh, but generally I like the more milder chilies, red and green and green peppers and those kind of chilies that are marinated. And I rinse them off because I think they're marinated in oil. So I rinse them off. Maybe I'll find some peppers that are not marinated in oil. Uh, So I don't even have to rinse them off. And what else? Quinoa. I also love to eat quinoa, which is kind of a seed. And apparently you have to rinse that off first. Otherwise it has some kind of icky thing on it that's not good for you. That's mildly toxic. So you have to rinse your quinoa. So I rinse it in a strainer like, you know, three or four times. I just keep rinsing and rinsing and rinsing until I think it's rinsed enough. And then I've cooked quinoa actually in my rice cooker, but you can also just throw it on the stove with some water and boil it. And I'm, I'm not going to saute vegetables in oil anymore because that's empty calories. And so I'm just going to start steaming my vegetables and then adding that to my soup. So like steamed, uh, slice up a bunch of mushrooms 
and add them to my soup after they're cooked. And you can basically just steam whatever vegetables you like and then add them to soup. Or if you want to, you know, be patient, you can just boil them into your soup, you know, heat them up into your soup. I don't know. There's just, it's just a limitless amount of things you can eat when you're on a plant-based diet. And apparently human beings actually don't need as much protein as we've been told that we need. So I'm going to, I am taking a vitamin B12 supplement to make sure that I get that nutrient. But apparently if I eat nuts and seeds, and rice and quinoa and buckwheat groats and beans and legumes and lentils and garbanzo beans, black beans, kidney beans, you know, all the different kinds of beans, navy beans, black eyed peas, you know, green beans. If you just basically eat from the rainbow, if you eat red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, uh, and you eat a variety of fruits and vegetables, you're getting all kinds of antioxidants and vitamins and minerals, and you're getting a lot of fiber, and you're getting, let's see, and then for good fats, you can have walnuts and avocado. Those apparently are, are really good fats for you and keep your blood sugar stable. And I noticed that I'm getting a lot of fiber in my diet at this point, and I, I'm having to use the bathroom more often, not to gross anybody out, but it does seem like my digestive system is functioning really well and I have a lot of fiber going through me. So I feel like my body is cleaning itself out. And I've also heard that mushrooms are particularly good. Mushrooms are pretty filling and it's a good meat substitute, mushrooms. And mushrooms have very unique properties in them that no other fruit or vegetable has. They're not really a fruit or a vegetable. It's kind of like just a, a fungus is a very unique substance. And it supposedly mushrooms uh, are sort of like a filter that clean toxins out of your body. You know, I don't really understand how that works, but basically I think it's a very unique kind of fiber when you eat mushrooms. So if you don't like mushrooms, what you can do is I see, I like them. I like their kind of weird flavor. They're kind of rubbery. They're kind of an odd, um, odd thing. Mushrooms, they're very unique, but if you don't like mushrooms, you can chop them up into little pieces and just mix them into your soup. And then you're just getting the nutrition of the mushroom without having to really taste them or even feel the texture. So I find that if there's certain vegetables that you don't like, what you can do again is just chop them up and cook them with other things that are your favorites and put your, your favorite spices and seasoning on top or your favorite kind of tomato sauce and then make a soup with vegetables that you need to eat more of. But I find that it's actually fun to eat nutritious, tasty, healthy food. You know, I, my way of rebelling, because I think a lot of people like to eat junk food because they want to rebel against being healthy, which I don't understand. I am kind of a rebellious person, but I tend to do the opposite. I rebel against mainstream American junk food. <laughs> so like processed foods like chips and cookies and crackers and, you know, things made with flour and sugar and donuts and things like that. I don't eat any of that. And in fact, I might make my own ice cream, non-dairy ice cream. I haven't tried this yet, but apparently you can make really nice pudding with chia seed because when you soak chia seeds, they get gelatinous, like kind of jello-like, jelly-like, and they thicken. And then you can add chocolate. So chia seed, chocolate, and water, or you can use, you know, soy milk or almond milk or coconut milk if you want it to be more creamy. Uh, but I tend to not like that processed milk, fake milk, so what I, or real milk. I don't like any milk. So what I want to do is add chia seed, water, banana, and chocolate. And you grind that up in a blender. And then you freeze it. And you can like add like powdered uh, chocolate or maybe grind up chocolate. Or perhaps chocolate syrup if you can find a you know healthy kind of chocolate syrup but you can basically make your own chocolate frozen dessert that's kind of like ice cream like that's non-dairy but I haven't actually tried this yet I did try some kind of banana chia seed pudding once and I really liked it it was kind of like a custardy pudding kind of thing and it was really tasty I also like uh, for non-dairy ice cream I like the kind made with coconut milk the best but that is a little pricey and it has carrageenan and guar gum and mono and diglycerides, which I'm not really sure are very good for you. I've looked it up and some people say it's harmless. Other people say it's not good for you. 
So suffice to say, I'm sure the safest and healthiest dessert would be to make it yourself, which with chia seed, water, banana, and chocolate, you know, or fresh strawberries or, you know, fresh fruit of whatever kind of fruit that you like, grind that up with a banana and some chia seeds and some water. And then you'll probably have, actually, I don't think you're supposed to grind chia seeds in your blender because it might ruin the, the um, gelatinousness of them. So what you should probably do is put in your blender, put water, chocolate, strawberry, banana, whatever fruit flavors you like with chocolate and mix that up in your blender. And then take the chia seeds and put them in there and stir that up and then throw them in your fridge or freezer to chill it to freeze it and or chill it and then it makes kind of a custardy pudding type ice creamy kind of thing but it's non-dairy it's there's no animal products and there's no guar gum or carrageenan or soy lecithin or monoindoglycerides it's just all natural whole food dessert so those are some of the things that I have been eating lately I also snack on fruit throughout the day if I get hungry I have an apple or an orange and I also learned a lot of people are worried about not getting enough calcium I learned that actually oranges have calcium in them and there's lots of fruits and vegetables that have protein and calcium and iron and different things there's also a lot of vegan bodybuilders there's plant-based eaters who are bodybuilders who are athletes who are very fit and strong and muscular and they get all of their protein and their fat from plant-based uh, foods. So that's good to know. So if I was king of the world, I would make doctors learn more about nutrition and the preventative medicine, the preventative medical power of nutrition on helping people not get diseases and or if they have a disease, eating really, really healthy can help you get rid of disease or at least minimize how bad it is and minimize your need for medication and or surgery. But even if somebody needs medication and surgery, they can still eat healthy food to help their immune system and their arteries be as healthy as possible. There actually has been studies where somebody goes to a plant-based diet that has very clogged arteries and are on medications. And within two or three weeks of eating a non, no animal product, no dairy, no meat, and just eating plant-based foods, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, and beans, they have noticeable differences where you can see that their arteries have cleared or gotten a lot cleaner. So you can really change your body pretty quickly if you switch to a plant-based diet, if you have you know, problems with cholesterol or clogged arteries or different ailments. Uh, sometimes if you change to a plant-based diet, you can really radically change your health actually pretty quickly. I was amazed.
This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, and you're listening to podcast number 49. I talked about whole food plant-based diet for humans, as well as a raw meat diet for cats and dogs, and how I think that's pretty healthy for me and my cat. Just speaking from my own personal experience, I have since reevaluated something. Four years ago, I went wheat-free and gluten-free for my thyroid. And to make a long story short, my thyroid became normal and I lost 40 pounds and they took me off the medication. And I've been wheat free ever since. And that feels better to me. And now I'm reevaluating. There's a doctor named Dr. David Perlmutter who wrote a book called Grain Brain. And I've been listening to what he says and what different doctors say and nutritionists about how fat actually could be good for you, not hydrogenated oil, but actual whole fat made by nature like coconut oil and the fat that is in uh, grass-fed beef and organic eggs and just like food made by nature, not fat made by nature, not um, processed, fake, refined oils and fats. So I'm reevaluating. I tend to feel better on a high fat, healthy fat, low carb diet, as long as I get enough fiber. So fruits and vegetables that are lower in carbohydrates, and then some animal protein and some tofu and drink a lot of water. And so now I'm figuring out that maybe my ideal food plan for myself personally, it's now September 21st, 2017. For me, my ideal food plan might be to alternate days between being a low carb, high healthy fat eating, and maybe almost a little bit of fasting, not eating a whole lot those days, except for the good fats and a little bit of fiber and a lot of water and some black coffee in the morning or some green tea. And then other days be mostly vegan, which is to eat uh, mostly fruits and vegetables. And I'm not sure about grains. I think I don't feel that great when I eat grains, but I've been eating um, sprouted rice, wild rice, brown rice, uh, amaranth, buckwheat groats, steel cut oats. That rhymes, buckwheat groats and steel cut oats. And I think I feel a little dopey and kind of uh, like grain brainy. There's a book called Grain Brain, look that up. But I feel kind of dopey and like my blood sugar goes up and down. So I'm not really sure if grain is all that good for me. Some people say grain is like whole grain is like natural, like fruits and vegetables. And other people say that grains are like refined foods. I know that wheat feels like it's refined and not good for me. So I'm not going to eat any wheat. So, because I worry about getting leaky gut and my thyroid is now normal, so I want to keep off the wheat. I also think I was addicted to wheat. So I think I lost 40 pounds because my body responded well to eating more fat and less carbs and less sugar. I, it could also have been, because I always exercise, uh, but my weight goes up and down here and there. And so I feel like maybe carbs make me eat more. I think that carbs stimulate my appetite. And so I think part of why I lost so much weight going off wheat was just because I was eating less calories because I eliminated all the bread calories from my diet. So now I'm thinking I'm going to alternate between being a semi-vegan um, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds, and maybe not hardly any grains at all. And then every other day have natural natural fat that's good for me made by nature and fruits and vegetables but no grains so low carb basically and low sugar and drink a lot of water thanks for listening see you next week goddess kring radio shannon kring goddess kring shannon kring goddess kring goddess kring radio shannon kring goddess kring shannon kring goddess kring